Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to my floor. Whew, I'm out of breath. I moved, had to run upstairs and get the FedEx guy. Um, about 347 years ago, I ordered or I owned a uh, gateway tower. It was a big tower, as you can tell by the size of this box. And I put it in other motherboards and stuff like that. And uh, I ended up taking the motherboard out of the original gateway, and it was my mom's PC. You saw a video I did on that one a long time ago about this gateway motherboard. Had a bad Dallas Real Times in it, and I replaced it and brought it back to life. Well, that was the board from the case that this is. I'm going to do a retro build. This is a gateway new tower. That's its official name is the Gateway 2000. Uh new tower. This is a P5 120. There was two models of this. This is the smaller of the two. There was even a larger one. The 486 size tower. 2317 7.5 inches. It's a pretty large case but why did I want this? Because I don't know. I had this case and I wanted it again. So this is the big uh, guy here. It's barely sitting on the edge of my work table because it's so large. You can see this is a 24 inch widescreen monitor. This is my fat head. This is a humongous tower and I love it. Okay, we're on VGA. We have power. We have video. PowerGraph 64 something F1 to run setup. It has no hard drive in it. I just want to see what the post is like. Uh, what the date range is, don't know, Intel Pentium P5 120, so that would be 120 megahertz. There we go. So, uh, CMOS battery has failed, go figure. I luckily have purchased some energizers from the previous Amiga maintenance videos where I can replace that. Thankfully, it's not a Dallas. Oh, it's 1990. I wish it was. I hit stop and I was recording. So this has a boot disk. Now we have a CD-ROM, a Blinken. We're going to hit the eject button. I think don't sound good. So inside of this massive tower of a case, we have a jumbled wired mess. Right up here is your battery, which I'm going to try to carefully remove. It has a double pin type holder. And that battery is long since dead. There is a spot on the very tippy top up here for a hard drive to sit. And that's a crazy spot, but kind of neat to see this much massiveness. This probably has a belt and it's gone into oblivion. I'm going to start by getting peripherals working hard drive and CD-ROM. I got my 2032 batteries that I did on the previous Commodore machine repairs. The smallest drive I could find is a Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM, 80 gigabyte. Hi, it's several hours later. I've tried numerous different cables and different units from compact flash to actual 80 pin ultra cables and regular cables. And this is the smallest drive I've got. And I'm beginning to think it doesn't work. I can't go with these because this doesn't work either. Okay, so I hooked up the old noisy 545 megabyte drive, took out this 80 pin cable, hooked up the drive, it sees it. It's now booting off the disc with the CD-ROM drivers and then I will format said drive. This unit will not boot off CD-ROM so you're always going to need a boot device like a floppy disk. It's too old. 1990 Five. Okay, so that took 35 minutes. Ejecting disc, rebooting. This thing's noisier than all get out. Now it's just this factory gateway board that's poo. My mother's computer, the mother's board that I repaired, is the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and install MS DOS on this freaking turd. Alright, so the gateway BIOS taps out at 700 meg, hence why the larger drives weren't even showing up. We are installing MS DOS 622 off of floppy. Alright, so after 10 damn minutes, I also have 8 Windows 3.11, or 3.11 as people call it, 
for work groups to go through. I have major hard drive problems. Hey, it's a couple hours later. I had a slice of pizza and I'm feeling a little better. Bought some tea. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Ended up putting in a Dabtech 2940 SCSI card in here. You can see that blue ribbon cable and a 500 and something meg SCSI disc. This is just the IDE drive that I knew that worked sitting up here. I don't know why it's booting, not booting, but we're going to go through the MS-DOS, configure everything, and uh, it's just allocating my hard drive space for me, and we're going to let it do its thing. The boot is faster. Hard drive light is unplugged because I have to plug it directly into the card. It's still going, but I kind of tightened up the cable management a little bit on here. Um, this yellow wire, I took the turbo light out of the harness down here and uh, used it for SCSI light. Building program manager and restart computer. Windows for work groups. Woohoo! Yay, look at that glory. Now I built it so I can play solitaire. If this isn't a beer drinking exercise, I don't know what is. Let me get these drivers installed for the sound card next. It's a DOS program. I downloaded them from the current Sound Blaster people on the old internet. And uh, I'll get the drivers installed and then we'll get sorted with this. It takes a long time because I'm back and forth to the other side finding old parts uh, like floppy disks or USB for the modern computer to pop in here and then uh, this big turd will get going. Not bad, 25 minutes or so. So I had to take the dog out for a poo so we missed the entire boot process. Anyway, who cares? Here is Windows 95. This operating system changed the world for PCs. How? You're using something similar to this right now, whether it be a Mac, a PC, Windows 10, 11. Welcome to Windows. Piss off. All right, we're going to see if this compact PD650, I have this massive pause. Here we go. All right, here we go. The DOS drivers are putting two CD-ROM drives. Removable disk F is going to be this PD650. You're going to notice, put this inside. These lights are orange and uh, green here on this PD drive. So now I can go into it, and you can see, there we go, there's FileZilla, let's do the list. After Dark, 3.2 for XP, and I got some drivers in here. Windows Media Player 9 for Windows 98. Now they're both red or orange. At least it works, and I can drag and drop files to this. It's about 300 kilobyte write. So don't expect any life-saving speeds for 2022. It is slow. It's nice to see that this motherboard does function. This is the original motherboard to this machine. I'm going to keep this together. I was going to put another build together in it, like a Mithlon or something really cool with a newer motherboard. Windows 95 on an S3 Trio 64 24-bit video. I really have to commend Gateway on the quality of this disk drive. I have been really putting it through the ringer. Either this wasn't used very often or this is a really good disk drive. I didn't do anything except give it a little blow in there. And props to my uh, computer city, doesn't exist anymore, junk disk that I drilled a hole in to make them high density. So I bought like boatloads of these for the Amiga. And I just put a drill in the corner and just drilled right through them all. And we have a stack of high densities, just like the old C64 days. In ultraviolet, they can, the enemies just appear in. It would just randomly like show up. Probably eat dinner. It's a uh, 9:30. To get this thing running again was a tedious task, not a hard one. It was uh, finding hard drives that would fit this old BIOS, 700-ish or less megabytes. Ended up going with an Adaptech SCSI drive, 550 meg I just had in the shelf on the archives. It's a little noisy, but it works fine. Installed MS-DOS 6, then Windows 3.1, just to play around with the old school way. It sucks so bad, that was what was fighting the Amiga at the time. And the Mac, Windows 95 came out, changed the world for the PC users. 
you still run all your DOS stuff, then you need all those crazy drivers, the beginning of plug and play, the migration to what you're probably using now. It's a far cry when you go retro and you experience how life used to be. I remember all this when it was brand new. Um, this exact computer with this exact operating system. A little bit less RAM and I had a P90. So, thank you for coming along on this long journey with me and I hope this was entertaining to some point. A lot of running around, a lot of back and forth, getting parts, finding things to make things work. Old drivers you can still find on the internet for your major branded cards and most of the stuff luckily was plug and play and I still had some old discs that worked well. Thank you guys for watching and coming along on this journey. Stay tuned for more. If you're not already subscribed, please consider clicking the subscribe button or even the bell to be notified when I make a new video. Thank you, and I hope you learned something.